Good evening everybody, Alex Starcraft here bringing you guys another Starcraft 2 commentary, the first commentary of the new week, and it is everyone's favorite day of the week, it is Monday, and I love Mondays with a burning passion. One big reason is because Day9 does his big Fun Day Monday daily, and that is honestly, I think, one of the most enjoyable things in the world to watch. So I've got about 29 minutes before that starts. And I've got two StarCraft games totaling about 30 minutes in length in game time, which is about 20 minutes in real time. So I should be able to catch the pre-daily and everything will be wonderful because I am done with homework and everything. So, oh god, I will just be able to relax. Now, I'm going to be bringing you guys another game. This is from the IEM uh, Globe, Global Challenge, something like that. I am Global Kiev. Now, I know a lot of replays have been cast by this, by almost everyone. We see um, Husky HD doing them. Day 9 is doing dailies, featuring a lot of the replays and plays. And I tried my best to find other things, but it's just kind of hard to. Uh, those are, more or less at the moment, they are the premier or some of the premier replays put out at a professional level, and that was really uh, the first tournament of this new year, so that really kicked things off. There's not too much else, uh, too many other tournaments and whatnot yet. Now, I am trying to cast this game. It is um, one of the games, like, no one like Husky HD casted it. I did find one other guy who casted it, but um, I, I feel like this is a good one for me to cast, especially because my... Um, the first game between these two players I casted got so many views, and I was just looking which matchup have I not casted recently, and the one I'd cast the furthest in the past was a TVP, and I found that this is indeed a best of three, so the game you guys saw was game number two. And so in this game, we'll really kind of get to see, is MMA going to end up taking the 2-1, or the 2-0 victory? Or is Hasuab's going to be able to win this game, which would put MMA down, and he made a comeback in the next game, and it'll go to an ace match? It'll be very interesting to see. Now, to the game, it just looks like so far we just have a one Rax expand coming out of MMA. Kind of saved me there, because I was just going to say, we have one barracks from MMA. He's probably going to expand. And lo and behold, he threw down an expansion. We have Hasuab's going for a kind of... It's a one gate... Zealot opening. I'm not sure if this is like a one gate expand because I don't think you get your cyber core for that, nor do I think you get gas. So I'll have to see um, exactly what he does. Now he is making a zealot, he is making a stalker. The zealot's just, I guess, kind of checking for maybe any bunkers, anything like that. And it is probably going to intercept this SCV, maybe get a hit off. And the zealot hits do a lot of damage. Wow, see, almost killing the SCV right there. The stalker is going to get out, pick off the SCV before it gets any scouting information. And MMA, we have producing a few Marines, a bunker at his front, and this is just very standard play for um, Terrans, or really any race when you go for uh, as early of an expansion as this, you generally just get a little bit of static defense. It helps make you just a little bit safer. And of course, static defense for a Terran is really just um, really just the bunker. They don't have the things like the spine crawler and the cannon that automate that do the automatic shooting. They just get these uh, highly trained Marines costing 50 minerals a pop because apparently marines are very cheap in the future we do have a little bit of hasuabs a little bit of pressure coming out of hasuabs right here the zealot does lose his shield he is forced to retreat and he does pick up that scv that was a little uh nice a nice little bit of micro coming out of mma trying to pick off this zealot but doesn't quite get it it's something you guys saw earlier i didn't comment on i went out MMA throwing down three barracks at one time. He is just now getting his first gas after his orbital on his main is done, or on his expansion is done. So this, I mean, obviously it can't be much except a very marine heavy play. Look at that, four marines at a time, also producing the SCVs, and he's just really going to be relying on this mule income. Good God, look how much higher his income is with those mules in order to do it, and we do have the expansion out of Hasuobs as well, it looks like it was a one gate expand, we see him just throwing down the robos and other gateways now, warp gate just finishing up, right as the nexus finishes, and we just have a few sentries, and sentries are, they're like almost the closest thing you can get for static defense, and the stalker is going to see the push out for Has um, from MMA, Hasuobs does have to pull that stalker back to avoid losing it, luckily it is faster than marines, so he's going to be trying to kite it as much as he can. Of course, he has to be very careful. You see MMA constantly is selecting these. 
but I think Hasselhoff will be fine. He has enough energy for almost, uh, yeah, no, he has enough energy for four, almost five force fields, and that'll be able to hold off those Marines for a long time. It'll split them up, especially now that the warp gate is done. He's warping in more stalkers, and he's just making an observer to do uh, do a little bit of scouting. It looks like MMA will be pulling back. He's a f uh, He knows... Oh, Hasselhoff probably has a lot of sentries. I, I gotta be careful. I don't want to get sandwiched in two here. And we actually have Hasselhoff's throwing down the proxy pylon over here. And this is very helpful, actually, because while it looks like this isn't the best placement, he can, as you can see, he can warp in down in this whole area right here, allowing him to just go ahead and break down those rocks. You do some stalkers pushing out in the middle, and we, he does lose one stalker there. He's microing as best he can. You can kite marines infinitely with stalkers. They are faster. They do have the longer range, but it is a hard thing to do. And we do see Hasuab's um, just kind of putting the observer not directly over the marines, as he knows there is a risk that MMA will see that and he will snipe it, something like that. And what is that s sound? Um, does anyone else hear that? Is that just me? It sounds like a waterfall. Okay. Anyway, so we do have uh, some more stalkers pushing out. Hasrobs doing his best to kite them. He still has not lost a stalker, so very good on him. And I don't think Hasrobs has actually lost anything. He's lost something. I'm not sure what. But we do see a very good job kiting. He's doing a good job. He's killed almost twice as many units worth, picking off another Marine, another. And this is the risk you take when you are going Marines as a Terran player versus a Protoss. And now we do see the Marauders out. They do not yet have concussive, concussive Shell. But as soon as there's Marauders on the field, all Gateway units kind of have to stay back. And you really have to find a another tech route to go for just because Marauders uh, just kind of eat up... Um, Almost all Protoss units, as Husky once said in his smash hit Banelings, the parody of uh, Baby featuring Kurt Hugh Hugo Snyder, because uh, those Marauders turn toss to goo, and it is very true. So we do have the tech switch coming out of Hasselob, so he's getting the Twilight Council up just now, actually throwing down a second forge, going for those double upgrades. So we don't have any upgrades out for um, either player yet, actually. It looks like MMA's it got his infantry about... The same progress as the armor. I mean, a little bit less. But both players are starting to go for the upgrades now. I'm not sure if that was an accident out of MMA, but that was not good. He just stemmed his entire army for seemingly no reason. There's no medevacs on the field. I don't even think... He, okay, he do, well, okay, he has a factory. It's scouting. Does he have a starport? Yes, he does. Okay, he is producing two medevacs at a time, so those will be able to heal them up. But they will that will make those medevacs initially pretty low on the energy. Hasselob's doing a very good job being very active with those um, observers. You see, he sees almost everything going on. And we do have Hasselhoff just building up his army a little bit. I guess he... Okay, so he's going to be getting the Zealot Legs. And uh, we do see... Okay, no um, no Templar Archives. Okay, there's the Templar Archives on the way. So I'd imagine we'll be seeing him go for Zealot Archon and some also High Templar uh, potentially with Storm if he feels like that's the appropriate choice. Just because that is just a wonderful composition against a Bio army. Obviously, Archon's doing that extra damage to Bio. And the Zealots with the charge really um, forcing the Terran player to use a lot of Stutter Step Micro and just keep away. Of course, when you're playing MMA, Stutter Step Micros is kind of like a second nature thing to him. So it might not be quite as effective. We actually do have Medivacs up here getting ready for a drop. Looks like what MMA is going to be trying to do. Another stim coming out of MMA. It's maybe not ideal. He does see that um, Hasuobs was attempting to get down the third. But he is going to be stopping any um, any intent at that. And it looks like we are... Maybe, okay, no, he is just going to be making an arc on. And we do have the drop coming in the back. But great reaction time from Hasuobs. Fully aware of this drop happening. I'm not sure how he was. But he reacted immediately. It looks like he's going to pick off all the units. And he's going to get the medevac. So that did not go very well for MMA. You see, he's still about 300 resources behind in the units lost tab. So he's been doing a pretty good job keeping even. But with this big tech coming out of Hasuobs and both of their thirds are about the same timing, he wants to try his best to stay ahead because this army is very strong. 
Not necessarily against Zealot Archon, though, but as I just saw over here, we have the Ghost Academy finishings, and those are very good against Zealot Archon. Obviously, the EMPs doing a lot of damage to the Archon's shields, and the uh, Snipes are actually managing able to get the Zealots. The EMPs are also just generally huge on the army. They get the Sentry's energy. All sorts of stuff, and so you see right now, they're just kind of battling for control of the center of the map, but both players have pretty similar income. Of course, the mules for MMA is just kind of skyrocketing him ahead, but Hazorops is getting his third up at about the same time as MMA, and we do have another drop coming now. The question is, will he be able to see it? And no, uh, just kind of threads the needle, and so he does see it. Will he be reacting? It looks like MMA could actually, he's going to get these high Templar for free. Whoa, great feedbacks on the Metavax, though. It looks like Hazwebs was going to attack, but now he's going to be pulling back. He does not want to lose that third. Warping in some Zealots, but the Medivacs are going to retreat because they are at very low health. And I would guess Hazwebs is actually going to be able to intercept these, and these would be a big deal if he was able to do that. MMA getting another free Zealot. But the transfer coming from both players out, dropping the mules, getting the gases saturated, and still just kind of dancing around the center of the map, trying to get that center map control. It looks like right now the supply does favor MMA a little bit, but we have a big engagement coming. MMA retreating back, taking a few shots with those marauders. There's two initial marauders that ran in. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but they did do a very good job getting the scout off. And again, Hasuab, he sees the entire composition of the Terran army, and he does see that there are ghosts on the field now. So it looks like Hasuobs is going to be pushing out, maybe try and put some pressure on the third, break this down. He does blink these stalkers forward, picking off that marine. And MMA is going to know this proxy pylon is there now. Would not be surprised to see him run up and pick that off the scan, also getting the observer. So very nice from MMA. Looks like these stalkers do not want to engage by themselves. And here comes a big engagement. Pretty good force field. It's coming out of... Uh, Hasuaz that he is forced to retreat very fast because the EMPs were very big. They hit the sentries, they hit the zealots, killed their shields. But Hasuab still making good use of what few force fields he has. Unfortunately, Stimpak allowing him to run around. The zealots are just kind of melting. The Archons are doing what little damage they can, but they just evaporated there. And if these zealots can get some work done, that would be great. But I'm not sure how much they're going to be able to do, especially because they're just kind of running to their death over here. So... It looks like the workers' loss tab is actually fairly small this game, but I would say at this point, MMA definitely has an advantage just because he, well, he is picking off the proxy pylon, and he just kind of crushed Hasuab's army right now. He showed some very good control with those EMPs uh, getting the sentries, the zealots, the archons. It looks like Hasuab's is now going to be going for Colossi because he says, all right, MMA's micro is just too good for me to use a unit like the Archon or the Sentry. He's just going to go with kind of the, uh, br still requires some finesse, but really the brute force of the Colossi. They do so much damage, especially with the plus two attack. So if he can hold off this attack here, he could be in good shape, but he is going to need to hold it off because otherwise he's at risk of losing his third. We see him pushing out right now. The Queen's getting some big EMPs off, getting the shield off almost every single unit. Looks like EMA or MMA is going to be picking off the Nexus, if he chooses to, but his army is actually separated. This ghost getting picked off completely by themselves by the Zealots. The Colossi picking off a lot of units as well. Huge storms coming down from Hasuobs, making an Archon out of those Templar once their storms uh, energy is exhausted. And these Colossi really need to do some work. If they can do enough damage, then Hasuobs could be in good shape. But there are so many Marauders, so many units just using Stutter Step Micro very, very well. And now we kind of see Hasuobs, it looks like his macro is actually slipping a bit. Now, he is behind by about 40 supply, but of course with that slipping macro, and I think he just lost a good number of workers, yeah, he lost about 20 workers. So of that, about 20, so actually almost all the supply he's behind is workers, and he does have a lot of money. We can see him making more Colossi, throwing down this Nexus once more. And now I feel like they might actually, you can see they're almost exactly even their resources lost. And I think Hasuobs made a little bit of a comeback there. He made a hold. He does have the storm on the way as well as he has Colossi, which are kind of, these two units combined are the ultimate anti-bio. He is a uh, mind out in the main as is MMA, I would imagine. No, he looks like he transferred some SCVs away. 
but we do have the upgrades both rolling out of both of the players soon. MMA about to finish plus two, plus two. It looks like he's going to be pushing almost as soon as that finishes. We do have some Vikings on the field as well, and this army is actually looking very scary from MMA. The Vikings and Marauders combined make the Colossi not quite as effective as they would be otherwise. Of course, um, it's just a game of reaction where... Um, Hasuabs went for the High Templar and the Archon, so MMA got Ghosts, and then Hasuabs is going for the Colossi, and then Hasuabs gets Vikings, and also, of course, the Marauders are just a bit better against almost everything that doesn't fly in general, just because they're a bit more beefy, they do a bit more uh, damage per shot, of course, they do that extra versus armored, and they have the armor of their own course the exception being something like zerglings they are good against zealots they can be good against zerglings and kind of a warning storm coming off from hassle say if you come up this ramp i am waiting for you and i will storm the living daylights out of you so we do have again both places kind of dancing Hasua dancing trying to retain control of the middle and mma just finishing an expansion into high yield and i think an engagement does need to happen soon Hasua has caught up in the supply but he's actually about 15 supply down on army just because he has that many more workers but i would imagine we're going to see him push probably as soon as his plus three finishes just because it looks like he's going to try and snipe that observer. Wow, great range on those Vikings there. But I would imagine we're going to see Hasselhoff's push as soon as this happens. Looks like MMA trying to force the engagement. And here comes the engagement. The Zealots running in. Good EMPs coming off, getting almost all of the Stalkers. But we have the Stalkers focusing down the Vikings. And the Colossi and the Storms doing so much damage from Hasselhoff's feedbacks on the Medivacs. Killing all of them. And MMA is in full retreat now. He just lost a lot of units. He's about 40 supply behind and the the planetary fortress is currently under siege the colossi from the high ground can reach it this viking of course is going to do what little damage it can but it does get picked off by those stalkers pretty quickly and at this point hasuabs definitely has the advantage you see those colossi he just did lose two of them but he manages to keep two alive and those colossi with the plus three attack just do so much damage we do see him producing two more he has his own uh stalkers sentries and mma is hurting for units right now he's hurting for tech as well of course bio is standard we do have another push coming out of hasuabs and he's just doing as much damage as he can to this planetary without actually engaging it he's slowly pushing further and further into mma's base and getting here he actually splits off the what I guess is the main army of MMA. It's very small from any reinforcements. Looks like we see MMA with an SCV and a few Marauders here, but they are not going to do him much good. And MMA is just going to be rushing for the counterattack, but all he has there is about seven Marauders, a Marine, and a Medivac, and that just does not have the DPS to force a base race, I think. One warping of units will kill that. Meanwhile, we have MMA, or Hasuabs, he's going to be taking down the natural expansion of MMA. And there is the GG. So it is indeed going to go to an ace match again you guys have already seen the second game that is the one already on my channel i guess i'll have to rename that but really just very good positioning in that battle right there hasuab's doing a lot of damage managing to kind of split up the terran army just so there were like vikings attacking but he focused fired them in the colossi with that what is it range of nine what is it? Yeah, range of 9 with plus 3 attacks just kind of melted through MMA's army. So without further ado, I will be bringing you guys the third and final game in this best of 3 series in just a few minutes.